Dr. Martel, thank you for coming on for the, uh, th these interviews. And, uh, um, and uh, we want to just get a chance for people to get to know you um, beyond just the, the bios that they have on the, on the website. So, um, so I'd, I'd like to just ask a few questions. Uh, Dr. Martel, we've known each other now. I think you've been, if I'm guessing, you've been around for about six years with the department, or is it longer than that? That's right. Uh, between uh, almost seven years now. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, time flies. It really goes fast. So I, I'd like to know just, you know, I always find this interesting for people. What inspired you to get into medicine of, you know, um, as you were coming up through your, your education and training? Well, Lonnie, I think, you know, early on, I was always curious about things in general. I always wanted to know you know, the why, not just the what, but the why. So I, I guess I, I sort of naturally gravitated toward an interest in science in general. And uh, when, I, when I became more mature, um, I, I wanted to sort of use scientific knowledge to help people, and I wanted to acquire skills to help people. Um, and then when I got to medical school, um, I realized that you can really learn a great deal about systemic health from examining the eye. And I was fascinated by the, the microsurgical precision and the, the intraocular surgeries that I saw while I was in medical school. And I had a great appreciation for the precision necessary to perform these procedures. And then, you know, also in medical school, in, in terms of ophthalmology, I felt like the, the patients where you help them with your vision or you restored their lost sight, that there was an immense amount of gratitude um, mm -hmm. from the patient to the physician. So I, I guess I was naturally drawn um, just based on my personality to science and, and helping people uh, to medicine. And then ophthalmology, uh, just because of the, the nature of the eye itself. When I got into residency, you know, we, we sort of have many subspecialties that we're exposed to, you know, we're exposed to um, retina, we're exposed to cornea, we're exposed to pediatrics and even um, ocular plastics and, and many, many, many different areas. And I was always fascinated um, by the retina. I was always awed by the beautiful view of the retina that you got through the ophthalmoscope. Um, and even during surgery, the view that you would get in the microscope of the retina, it really intrigued me. And even to this day, I'm fascinated by the retina and um, just sort of in awe of the beauty of it, almost like, you know, almost like the sunset, you know, you know that, you know what the sunset looks like, but you're always fascinated and, and, and awed by a beautiful sunset. And I, and I see that every time when I'm doing surgery on the retina or I'm, I'm looking at the retina. And during ophthalmology residency, I also um, was you know, intrigued by the challenges and also the importance of the retina in terms of the visual pathway um, and the blinding diseases that affect the retina and, and the lack of good treatments. Um, and then lastly, you know, the, of all the surgeries that I learned in ophthalmology residency, it seemed like the retina surgeries were the most challenging and the highest stakes. So, you know, those, those are the things that sort of drew me to medicine and science and, and retina in general. Well, you know, it's, it's nice to hear because, I, you know, I know that um, I, I, the passion's coming through and I know your patients really, you know, um, uh, really speak very highly of you and have a great, re you know, appreciation for you. And I'm sure that's partly because you really enjoy what you're doing. Um, <laughs> Now, maybe some of your patients don't know, though, and people that, that have, uh, uh, you know, that just see you clinically don't know some of your interest in research and other things that you're trying to do to advance care. We talked a little bit about it in your biography, but tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're doing in, in, in academic medicine research. Sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the clinic, I'm sort of most interested in the challenge of help, helping patients with diseases that may not have simple solutions. So this is often the impetus for formulating important clinical and scientific questions. So my main areas of interest in terms of research are things like vision restoration therapies. And along those lines, I've been fortunate enough um, to work closely with Dr. Sahel, our department chair, and also a, a retina expert on 
two really innovative clinical trials that are cutting edge and really um, at the forefront of um, important milestones in vision restoration. And one of them is called the PRIMA trial. And basically, patients with really advanced age-related macular degeneration uh, have significant visual impairment, almost complete loss of vision, um, particularly the fine details in vision. And um, there have been many, many efforts at trying to restore vision in these types of patients because the retina is not a tissue in the body that can regenerate itself once it's gone. So the PRIMA trial basically employs an artificial retina. So a, a chip that mimics the activity of the retina, um, the cells that are lost um, that normally sense light, uh, this chip can mimic that activity and potentially restore sight. And it's a surgically implanted chip. Um, so that's an exciting clinical trial, um, again, aimed at vision restoration, which is sort of a, uh, the last frontier in uh, many retinal diseases that cause blindness. Another one is a treatment um, it's called an optogenetic treatment. Basically, there are certain retinal diseases where there are certain cells that degenerate over time in, a, in, a, in some cases in a very rapid fashion. And in diseases like retinitis pigmentosa, for example, once those photoreceptors are gone, the retina doesn't have the ability to sense light uh, very well anymore. So an optogenetic approach basically is a gene therapy uh, treatment. And the gene therapy transforms the remaining cells in the retina to allow them to become light sensitive and again, potentially restore sight uh, in patients with blindness from uh, retinitis pigmentosa. So I've been fortunate to be involved in uh, these two important milestones in vision restoration therapies. And certainly um, early on, uh, I'm quite excited about some of these therapies uh, in the future for vision restoration in many of our patients with retinal blinding diseases. Uh, in addition, uh, I've had the privilege of working with um, many, uh, many important collaborators uh, and many experts in many different fields. Um, I've, I've had the privilege of working with um, some scientists in our department, but also some scientists uh, over at the Carnegie Mellon uh, University and the Robotics Institute, uh, working on uh, robotic uh, instrumentation for uh, vitreoretinal retinal surgery to assist with the efficiency and safety um, and to try to do surgical maneuvers that may not, may not be within the realm of capability of humans. So that's also exciting work, um, but everything is aimed at trying to uh, improve the well-being of patients with blindness and visually impairing diseases. Wow. I'll also mention one of the exciting things that I've been able to do with a lot of this work is work with young doctors and students as well and that's also a, a big source of gratification for me um, with everything that I do. Wow. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> um, that's, a, you know, the, the work with the Prima device, the work with the retinal implants and, and you know, the optogenetics, I, I see it as extremely exciting. And I know that you have a really large role in that. And so, so in answering this question, it's hard to imagine that there'd be, you know, um, you know, different answers to this, but I'm interested you know, what would you say would be, in your mind, you know, your greatest accomplishment that you really are proud of, um, you know, professionally? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good question. I touched on it a little bit. I think, you know, mentoring young doctors and students is probably my, the accomplishment I'm most proud of. I think, you know, when you're training young doctors to do surgery and you're training them on how to do research and they're contributing to research. It's probably one of the most rewarding aspects of my job um, along the lines of helping people see again. Um, and I think the reason for that is that you, they're almost like your children. You know, you get to watch them grow um, and then you send them off and they end up doing great things. And I think that that just sort of increases your own sphere of influence um, on your profession, but also your sphere of influence with the ability to help people 
through the actions of your trainees once they've once they've left. Yeah, you know, and and you know, I know a lot of our trainees have gone on and done very very good things. So it's you know it's wonderful to be part of that process. So when you came, we said it seven years ago, which it's hard to believe. I you know, and, and it's hard to I've I've been involved with the department now for ten years, and trust me, that goes by so quickly. So when you came. Um, what attracted you to Pittsburgh? What were the things that's, that, you know, of the opportunities that came up? I'm sure you've had many. What really attracted you to make Pittsburgh your home? Right. Well, you know, quite honestly, I didn't know much about Pittsburgh uh, before I came for the job. You know, Pittsburgh sort of had a reputation as sort of a, uh, you know, an older sort of steel built city, you know, bent on, you know, manufacturing and steel. And, Really, when I came here, uh, I was I was really surprised that it's really nothing like that at all. You know, it's sort of a uh, an academic type of city, a city built on um, a lot of innovation, lots of universities, lots of young professionals, um, and certainly a great city for medicine in general. Um, with what UPMC has done um, here in Pittsburgh, so you know when I. When I finished my fellowship or when I was interviewing for jobs, I knew that I wanted an academic type study, setting. I knew that I wanted to see patients in the office, but I also wanted to contribute to science. I wanted to um, have the capability and resources to perform research. And I wanted to be th that to be a big component of my career. So I was bent on sort of a high powered academic institution and certainly University of Pittsburgh fit the bill for that. Uh, but when I came, you know, I, I saw a city that was nice and people that were friendly um, in, uh, you know, an environment here at, at Pitt where there was an opportunity to work with creative colleagues, both scientists and clinicians, um, and an opportunity to perform, you know, cutting edge research and be exposed to new treatments. Um, and certainly the opp opportunity for innovation in my field um, with research. Um, mm -hmm. And I also saw a commitment of the leadership um, to science and scientific endeavors, uh, and also a commitment to sort of top-notch um, patient care. And I, I think with our current leadership, um, it's not only has it persisted, but it, in a way it's actually gotten even stronger, um, certainly with Dr. Sahel here, um, we're really uh, poised to do amazing things. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Sahel has accomplished so much uh, already. Um, it's really a testament to, to him uh, that, you know, our department is really moving forward uh, to become a world-class center for, for eye research and eye care in general. Yeah, I, I agree with you that it's exciting to be part of that. I, I have to say uh, on my own personal level, but so now we can sort of see now where the future's heading, I, I think, and getting a sense for that um, uh, as we're, you know, moving towards many things that, that are, are planned in the, in the near future. What, what excites you the most about some of the things that we think that you think we can accomplish here as a department in the, in the right. coming years? Well, you know, my work here, you know, has been dedicated um, not only to strive to deliver the best possible care to patients, um, but also working on projects that I described to try to cure blindness. Um, and that's, you know, certainly a bold, um, a bold goal, um, but certainly something that we think here is doable. Um, and I think that uh, our department and our institution in general, it's a very exciting time. Um, we've got a new vision institute that's under construction, um, and it's going to be an opportunity for us to collaborate quite closely, um, you know, scientists, um, vision rehab, um, patient care, um, and, you know, certainly the investment in, in that type of building is um, something that you don't see very often. Um, and, you know, just the growth of our department we've acquired many, many, many different scientists across the spectrum. Those, you know, with expertise in artificial intelligence and in neuroscience and in gene therapy. Um, and then clinicians from 
many, 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 many different uh, backgrounds, um, both in the U.S. and internationally. And it's also an exciting time for international collaboration. Dr. Sahel, uh, with his ties in Europe, we've, um, a lot of these clinical trials that are quite innovative, uh, those are going on in Pittsburgh uh, and, you know, in Europe and, you know, throughout the world. And I think that uh, the international collaborations are quite exciting um, and the support that we have for that here. And I think that in my field in general, you know, the emergence of vision restoration therapies, things like, you know, gene therapies, retinal prosthetic devices, artificial intelligence, um, stem cell therapies, those are all areas in their relative infancy, but I think that those are areas with quite a bit of promise and uh, areas that we're really all developing here uh, in some form at UPMC and in our eye center. So I think the future is bright. I think that there are many um, retinal diseases in general for which we have currently no really good therapies, um, but these vision restoration approaches that I mentioned, uh, I think that there's some promise uh, for these, for trying to restore sight. And I think that that's, that's the exciting thing for what we do, is helping people um, suffering from vision loss recover some of their vision. Well, I, you can't really get anything more exciting or more you know, ambitious than that. So um, Dr. Martel, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Uh, and pleasure, thank you. Line.